Hey guys, this is Aaron. Welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, in this one I'm going to be showing you how to make a very um, very basic, simple house. So we're going to start with the rectangle tool. Let's go down here. And I'm going to drag out, uh, we'll say 20 by 20 feet by, we'll say 10 feet. And don't forget to put a comma between your measurements when you're doing that. I'll drag out another box, make this one 35 feet by 15 feet. How about that? That's a bit long, so I'll just switch to my move tool here, and I'll drag this in five feet, uh, which is good. Erase this line, reverse my face, so I have the front face showing up, and I'll drag this up ten feet. So that looks like that's not bad. And I'll say two more feet. So now we have sort of a construct for our house, and the first thing I'm going to want to do, I'm going to start working on the roof. So I'm going to just draw a line down the middle here and I want this line to wrap around the top surface here and in order to do that we need to use inferencing. So I'll just use my uh, started line and I'll sort of conjoin with the midpoint over here and I don't know if you can see that but it's dragging a line out on the green axis. It's telling me where the midpoint of this line is over here. So I'll just click and on the green face I can align these two uh, these two lines together. So I'll just draw a couple of lines connecting where our roof is going to bend up. And if I use the select tool and hold shift, I'll get a little plus minus. So now I can select and deselect any number of lines or faces. So I'll just select these two lines, go to the move tool, hit alt, and now I can drag this up. I'll drag it up six feet. Type that in, hit enter, and now we have our roof. So we're going to want to add an eave to our house. There's a couple of ways of doing that. You can use inferencing again. I want to just draw a line, match your line, match your point, drag it down like so. And then you can push and pull this surface. Kind of pull it out a little bit. You have a bit of an eave. The problem with that is you don't have much control over how uh, how fat the eave itself is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a tape measure tool and drag this down. Drag it down six inches on both sides. And the tape measure tool will straighten itself with any line you're dragging it down from. So you don't need to worry too much about it dragging a straight line down from here. The only problem is if you pick an end point, it won't bring a guide in. It'll just draw a line. So make sure you're on an actual face and not an end point. So now I'll just draw my line here. It'll snap to the guides. Delete my guides. And I'll pull this out eight inches. Another problem you'll run into with the push-pull tool is if I want to pull this roof down so that it sort of hangs out over a little bit, the push-pull tool will only bring it out on a, on a straight axis. It won't actually bring it down, so it's sort of creating a problem for me. A way around this is if I push in the house rather than the eave. So I'll push this in 8 inches. If I draw a line here, I can push this in. I'll just erase my lines and now we have an eave. Another way to create an eave is using the offset tool. So I'll just go here, select the tool, rotate to our bottom face, and if you click and drag you can see that the offset tool sort of brings in the same shape that's on the outside edges. So you can use that on any number of faces and you can push and pull as well. But for now we'll just stick with the bottom face. So I'll bring this in six inches and now we can pull this surface up if I just select here. And I'll bring this up a little ways. Give yourself some room to play with on the edges. Like that. So now we have our eave. You can add a door and a window to your house using the rectangle tool. Using the offset tool you can add a frame. So I'll just drag this in a couple of times. You can push and pull this to add some depth. The same can be done for the door as well. But you'll run into a problem when you try to uh, offset your door is it creates unnecessary geometry below the house. So a way around this is that you can just highlight your edge faces here, select the offset tool again, and now it will only offset the three lines that we have selected, like that. So now you can push and pull this as well. 
If you want to add a chimney to your house, you can do this by drawing a line. But the problem is it won't align to the actual face because you're not on an axis. An axis doesn't bend down, so it won't allow you to do that. You can use inferencing again if you want to do so, or you can use a guide if you want to drag in a guide. But we'll just use a line for now. Draw this up. Use inferencing again. And then we'll pull our surface over. Now we have a chimney. You can offset the top as well if you want it to go down. You can also change the view of your object by going to the view toolbars and turning on the view tool set, which are these here. This will change all of the views of your model currently. I'll just stick with this one for now. You can also turn on shadows by going window and going down to shadows, which will bring up a shadows window. And you can turn shadows on and off with this icon. You can also change the time of day, the time of month, and how dark and how light your shadows are. Let's leave it there for now and add some textures to our house. So just go into roofing, select the roofing texture, and as said in the previous tutorial you can adjust the size, so I'll make this two foot three. And if you'd like to change the dimensions independently you can click on this little chain which will break the link. So if I want this to be five feet, now it's stretched and the bottom dimension didn't change. Again, you can change the opacity. And if you'd like to add a custom texture, you can click on this little browse button, which will allow me to explore my computer for any texture files that I might have. JPEGs and TIFFs will work. There are other formats that will work as well. So now we have a new texture. I can change the color as well by changing the settings up here. If I want to reset the color, I can just click this and it will revert to the original texture's color. If you want to edit a texture later, you can replace it by going to the texture you want to use, holding shift, and clicking. And it will replace all of the same textures at the same time. If you'd like to add a base to your house, you can just draw a line and use what's called the Follow Me tool. Similar to the Push-Pull tool, this tool will allow me to wrap around faces, go up and around objects. So if I just go to the bottom here and I can wrap it around by following the bottom edge of the house and clicking on an end point. There, now we have a base to the house. Another way you can do this is by undoing your action. Simply select all of the lines around the face that you want to connect with nothing else selected. Then click your follow me tool it will look like it's deselecting your lines, but don't worry. Just click the face you want to wrap, and it will do it automatically for you. If you want to rotate a texture, you can do that as well by right-clicking on it, going to Texture and Position, which will bring up these four buttons. Blue will allow you to scale and skew a texture. Red will allow you to move it around. Green will allow you to scale it on the same aspect ratio and rotate, which is what we're looking for and yellow will allow you to change the perspective of it in a three-dimensional fashion. We'll just use rotate for now. You can also copy a texture, even one that's been rotated, by going to the paint bucket tool and holding alt, which will bring up the eyedropper. I can then select and then bring that to another surface to paint with. As you can see in just a couple of minutes, you can build a pretty simple house with some sophisticated geometry. Hopefully this tutorial helped you, and uh, thanks for watching.